Hey everybody, welcome back to Two Hours on a Sunday. I'm Nick. And I'm Brian. And today we are talking about one of the most iconic Christmas movies of all time. And that is Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And there is no way we could have done this podcast without inviting the head owner of the Pantry Bake Shop from Windsor, Ontario, my <laughs> sister, Catherine Chauvet. Hello. Hi, Hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and when we started discussing topics for season two, I was talking to her one day and she's like, how do you not have this movie on there? And to be honest, I totally, it skipped my mind, even though we've seen this 10 times in our lifetime. Oh my God, 40. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm adding it to the list because then she's like, well, I'm definitely going to be on it. So I want to thank you right off the bat for hopping on to join us to talk about the iconic How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Of course, it's my pleasure. Honestly, it's one of those weird questions that everybody's always like, oh my God, what's your favorite movie? And you like blank and you freeze and I always don't know what to say. But in the back of my mind, I just want to be like the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> it's either that it or the holiday for you right 100 percent. and like i'm not kidding i could probably watch the grinch all year round it's just that good i've i've had that discussion with a couple people recently and they they are confident and proud to say that the grinch is their favorite movie and they watch it multiple times throughout the year and i'm like that takes a that takes some guts to say that <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't think it takes guts. <laughs> well, I think in terms of like the the idea of holiday movies, right? Yeah, yeah. Like people are kind of hesitant to say, "Oh yeah, I like I like the snow and I like watching holiday movies year round." But really, like this movie stands up. Well, you sound weird. Oh, for sure. Like if somebody's like, "What's your favorite movie?" and you come back with The Grinch, they're like, <laughs> "That's are you, you okay? <laughs> are you a happy person?" <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yes, I am. But he's the most relatable character of all time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I think to kick this off, I want to ask both of you, is there a more iconic live action character than Jim Carrey's Grinch? Absolutely not. Absolutely. It's, <laughs> no? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, it's method acting times a million. The, you have to think of the mindset, the makeup alone. Like he, I, I believe we we would watch some videos like, like i don't know i think it was over 10 hours or something like eight hours like a full day just to get into character and then you have to shoot so like what were those days like you know what i mean his days were longer than everybody else on that set and it was like what was he doing for those eight hours other than like the voice the moves alone like cut out all the vocals of that movie the posture and the way that he moved his body, that alone for me was, it's everything. The belly, like, you don't just, you have to practice that. <laughs> the belly's amazing. <laughs> no. Like, all these things, right? And, like, it's not like he had eight hours where he could, it was all mindset because you're sitting there in a chair, not moving, getting all this work done every day. Like, I can't think of anybody yeah. else who went through that. I mean, there probably is on you guys would know, but like that alone to me is like, that's the dedication. And that's where you like, when you see the end product, you're like, that's why it's still the number one Christmas movie in my mind. Cause he, he got trained by Navy SEALs to endure pain because originally, like you said, it was an eight hour process, but they did get it down to two, two and a half hours and then an hour to take it off. But he had to do that looking at the shooting schedule, he had to do that like 85 of like the 95 days of shooting. So every morning he would have to go in for two and a half hours and he would just, there's interviews where he was like, it's for the kids. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. <laughs> Cause it's, he just has to, cause Jim Carrey in the eighties and nineties, he was all over the place yeah. in his yeah. acting ability. He was a very he was diverse. wild actor. Yeah. And for him to sit down for any length of time was probably the most excruciating thing. And he said he learned patience to the ninth degree. Yeah. I think this guy gave us the Truman show, Bruce almighty mm -hmm. and the Grinch. And like amongst so and many, liar, 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 liar. Liar. Yeah. like, and amongst so many others, <laughs> and Ace Ventura. Yeah. Like amongst <laughs> so many great films. And then to do something like that, where it was like, I feel like such a different, cause he physically looked so different. So it was like a completely different mindset. But yeah, like, and then you think, oh, I'm done my, my work. Oh, let me sit for another hour <laughs> at work <laughs> just to get yeah, ready. Well just sleep in my trailer. <laughs> yeah, just leave it on, get the bedhead. But it, for, for me, it was the, 
the contrast between like you're saying it takes that long to get ready you're essentially having to sit still for hours and then the energy that you bring to the the filming of it it's it's so unimaginably different and even just if you had no idea of like the production it took to get to the end product it's like that looks like it's hard <laughs> and it, it takes a very specific person to create, to bring that to life. Absolutely. Right. I don't think anybody else would have done, done it that well. And that's why they probably haven't tried, even though they did do another animated movie recently. It's not even close because you've done it perfect as an animated cartoon for a 26 minute short originally. And then the, the only live action adaptation, you can't top what you've already done yeah. because it was made perfectly the first time. And I think the, when we're talking about iconic characters, the Grinch has evolved from just plain social media. And I think the more the years go by, people relate to the Grinch more and more, especially <laughs> Jim Carrey's and how he responds <laughs> to situations. Yeah. And now that memes are a thing, you see his face plastered over everything. Yeah. And yeah. so his, his iconicness as the character evolved from 2000 to 2023. Or I think if we're talking about iconic characters, what you can think of in live action where Heath Ledger's Joker was a time oh. to be alive. Mm -hmm. Like that was that year it came out. And Why then don't you say years, that? Even now he's, he's still considered to be one of the greatest. And then yeah. you think of other characters like Harry Potter. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. There's these characters. And then when you're talking about say movie characters who are recast doing the same role and you're talking about Spider-Man. Tobey mm -hmm. Maguire will always be everyone's first Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to the iconicness of the look, the presentation, mm -hmm. I think it's definitely up there with the Grinch and then Heath Ledger. Oh, hundred percent. When it comes to yeah. when it comes to characters on screen. Yeah, I was I was trying to think of who, and honestly, you hit it right on the nail of like because <laughs> I was thinking more like oh, who was a character, but right, like that was. And even if they try, there will be no other Joker. And I think the whole world knows that. And I think that's the same thing that it is with the Grinch. It's so iconic that you don't even touch it because you won't be able to. Like nobody will be able to. And sure, you can do other Batman movies and have other Jokers because of that storyline. And the Grinch is so one in its own. But you'll never touch the originals and like who made them, who they are. And I think... When it comes to the iconicness of the Grinch, I think it caters to how the movie was made. Mm -hmm. And in the late 90s, early 2000s, they used a lot of practical building of sets to make it more believable. And I think if it was made nowadays, everything would be motion captured, CGI. Yeah. And it would yeah. look like a hot mess. Mm -hmm. But in 2000, when this movie was made, they had the biggest production budget they didn't think it was possible. They took up four studios to build the town of Whoville, the mountaintop, where the, the Grinch's lair. They built absolutely everything. And I think Whoa. without having the real props and the real Whoville to go through in the costume and the practicality of it, I don't think it would have stood up at all. Like it wouldn't have aged well at all. No way. As, as like fantastical as it is based off of the original Dr. Seuss book, like it still felt real because it was physically real. And I, I think that makes all the difference with, with something like that. If it, if everything was like artificially made, like if it was CG or mostly VFX, like we as the audience wouldn't feel as immersed in it. Like I know it's a set, but it doesn't feel like a set. Like Whoville felt like a place, even if it lit literally is like one street and a roundabout with a big Christmas tree in the center. Like that's pretty much all Whoville was and a couple houses <laughs> yeah. that they went into and the school. Like, but you felt, you felt like it was real because it was. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest things that Universal and Disney needs to get on board with is that we have a whole Harry Potter world. Could you imagine a real life Whoville? I mean, <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. Oh, that would be great. Done. <laughs> they should definitely do that. Like, and then going into <laughs> the shops, really going into the shops, getting your memorabilia, getting all your Christmas gifts. And then like what you were saying about making it so real, 
It's like even when the scene when Cindy comes down because she couldn't sleep. And I think it was at the time when the Grinch is literally stealing her Christmas tree. And she actually, yeah. I yeah. believe. There's a light on this um, tree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe um, she actually does have a cup of cocoa or something, whatever she was bringing back to her room. But it was actually real. Like there was cocoa or whatever in her, in her glass. And nowadays it's like even a cup of coffee or like a to-go cup there ain't nothing in there you know that all the movies you watch there is nothing in there and it's like just as simple as that us being like okay she would like you can physically see that there was something in there and that she was holding that even alone puts you in more and more that it was not just like a frou-frou oh like grab a coffee like right are you'd be like oh look at it, like wow well no this actually has something in it it looks so different too, like a fake drink compared to a real drink. Like yeah. when the act of doing it, it's like there was nothing in there, and it like I, you feel it, you feel it's off. Yeah, I, th- I think that's what really brought this movie to life. It's the fact that everything was tangible and real for not only the actors but for us as well. It was it was more believable. Like even his sleigh with the the suction, like the big vacuum. You're like. <laughs> I, like there, I, I I looked at the one scene where the presents were going into the big ba- sack, and I thought about it. I'm like, there's probably just a like the sack material, and people were underneath it pushing like boxes up and down to make it look like it was filling up, but it still looked real. Yeah, and that's all I cared about. It's like, oh, it looks great, but like you know, watching it this time, I was like, how would they do that? It's probably just dudes. <laughs> pushing it up and it's like, oh, there's boxes moving around in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> but simple things like that make it make it feel like what's going on in the movie is real. Yes. Totally. And speaking of Cindy Lou, what yeah. do you guys feel My girl. Cindy Lou brought to the movie in terms of their relationship with her bringing the Grinch out of his mood and into the light of enjoying Christmas? As much as we're talking about how iconic the Grinch is, I honestly, their relationship together, a match made in heaven. I mean, she is just as much of an iconic character as he is, because I feel like it was both of them, right? Like they were the shining stars. I, I don't think one was more like, obviously it was more about the Grinch and he definitely was, if you want to rank it, sure, number one. But I mean, she was right there with him and I I just don't know like if it would have been somebody else like or even like age too like she was at the perfect age and any older or younger like younger really wouldn't have worked and a little bit older I don't think you would have got that same cuteness factor and like the you like everything she said it was just like oh my god you feel for this little girl who loves Christmas so much and uh yeah I just think that 100% I mean like now she's so old but it's like you got to look back and not that old but you know um look back and be like (laughs) look at what i did at like i don't know she probably like eight seven or eight Mm -hmm. probably around then yeah but i think it goes to jim carrey as a performer and probably making her feel the most comfortable as possible on set because as a child that can easily frighten you but i think she was also at an age where they, they built a bond on set and in terms of her believing in Christmas is more than just presents because all of Whoville is at a point where all they care about is buying gifts. Like the Grinch said, where do they end up? In your in garbage. garbage. Yeah. Up, up <laughs> in a garbage. Up with me on Mount Crumpet. So to her to go up to him and really break him down and the the way he developed over the course of the movie and realizing I got you, Cindy Lou. My, and then his heart, you know, when he one. realizes his heart's beating and he's like, I'm <laughs> leaking. And he's he's slowly <laughs> discovering feelings. It's the greatest from him going all moody at the beginning yeah. to realizing there's more than just him on a mountaintop. Because the, realistically, he was bullied. Mm-hmm. And that really drives home what bullying can do to somebody. But all it takes is somebody to involve you and bring the community to see he's not just somebody who hates Christmas, but who 
was just done wrong. And now that everybody can enjoy Christmas. But I think she was definitely a top tier contender for standing up like the Grinch's movie, like bringing the reason why yeah. the Grinch is a, a story is so memorable. I think it, both of their characters deserve a lot of credit. They pull, they both pull a lot of weight in this movie because it, like the Grinch, well, like, like we said before, a, a lot of people nowadays can probably relate to some of the characteristics of the Grinch. Everybody's, everybody's got their day that they just <laughs> don't care <laughs> or, you know, they're real fed up with things. But Cindy's character is that pure like childlike innocence that we all kind of have to remember every once in a while it, it, to pull ourselves out of the muck of everyday life and being kind of put down by other people or other things going on in life. Um, it's a good way to have different perspectives and different way to uh, a, a approach the same topic. Are we going to be the jaded grumpy person that has a, has a uh, change of heart at the end of the story, or are we going to be the perpetually positive individual for the day? And be the shining light for somebody else. Like it's, it's, it's two endearing characters because the bad guy, bad guy, I guess the main <laughs> character uh, was redeemed and the, the person to help them w was always there. They were the constant positive light. And I thought that was really nice. And it, it didn't really, sh you didn't see that as much in the original in the animated short. Right. Cause he wasn't much of a character. Whereas the narrator really drove the 26 minute story where now they really let Jim Carrey flesh out and give the Grinch a personality rather than just moping around and letting the narrator do all the work. Yes. I think the reason why I watch it every year is because the dynamic between the two is that throughout the year, we are going about our life, right? We're busy, busy, busy. We don't have time for things. We're rushing, right? So it's like, okay, now we're the people of Whoville. We're the cringe. And then it brings home to like, hey, life is not that serious. And again, yeah, it does come around a great time, but it isn't about the present. And I think years pass, it was always like, oh, what am I going to get? Especially like my siblings, right? What am I going to get them? Oh, I want them to like it. And now it's like, with you guys away, all I want for you guys to be is home and us to hang out. And so I think it really resets, especially, you know, with it being December and whether you watch it once or twice or three times, you know, um, it really, <laughs> res <laughs> it really resets you for going into the new year because it's like, you know, you don't have to be, you can still be that innocent person and that person who just enjoys the small things in life, like getting a cup of cocoa and, you know, just seeing the sparkle and the lights. And I think that's what's so beautiful is when the lights do go up. And, and I think taking us back each year, and I guess that's when you have a family too, and you start to realize that, wow, like look at through a child's eyes that, oh my God, just like the lights on things is so pretty and all the colors and everything like that. And it just kind of brings back to what we should be thinking about, what we should be seeing and just the small things, you know, through a kid's eyes is just so much better. Like setting up a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. Oh my God. It sets them, the whole mood for the room. And then putting their whole, their own ornaments. Are you kidding me? That was everything for us when we were a kid, you know, the, the crap you made at school, you're like, oh, it gets on the tree. <laughs> and you look back. Really, really, your parents are like, I can't wait to get that off the tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't wait to lose that. Yeah. You're like, what is this styrofoam, sparkly ass bulb that I made when I was eight? And I thought, I made the best in the class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, um, and that was a good line. Um, when he's making, uh, he shaved his beard. Oh, Martha. Oh, Christmas. The fire is in love. That's probably one of my, oh, that's one of my favorites. And speaking of those those moments let's let's dive into some of our most iconic yes. moments and lines throughout the film because 
I don't know if there's a movie with more iconic lines that you remember. Well, that we remember. I don't know about yeah. you, Nick. You've probably seen it a few times, but that sticked with us from the first viewing yeah. <laughs> that we just say constantly now just because that's how we feel. And it'll, it'll literally be like a greeting. Like, if everybody needs to know, my brother and I will get in a room and whatever's going on, it'll be a dinner. Okay, it could be July or May. And we're just bust out Grinch lines. Like out of nowhere. And, we just, and it's this thing. And I think that's the coolest part is like growing up, we had little things and I was always player two for all of the games. And it was just one of those things where this was so cool to connect on. And it's like, we still do it and we're 27 and 30 and it'll just be like the craziest things. And, uh, I, I mean, I just gotta, you know, stretch and it'll be like, Ooh, uh, that's it i'm not going i feel like that's everybody nowadays yes <laughs> if you can't find anything nice to wear then i'm not, I'm not going, going. <laughs> yeah this movie is just chock full of lines to quote but also like you said memes like i i think anytime something f- mildly comedic comes up i find that i can relate it back to a grinch meme and that just makes me happy it's 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 so convenient because because you you know the movie off by heart pretty much so any any amount of finding a meme is super easy you're like oh that that's that that's that scene i just pull it up um but for me it's the grinch shrek and stepbrothers are like the three most quotable and memeable movies uh just based on how i grew up like my stepbrothers and i would watch stepbrothers all the time i watched shrek to the point where i knew every single line off by heart which is silly to think about now that's in my brain it's Um, not it's not silly i watched it it was a fantastic (laughs) film (laughs) it's a national treasure it really is and 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 this one and and the grinch It, it there's there's no other movies that I'm I'm astounded that people can remember lines from TV shows, Brooklyn Nine Nine, The Office, Parks and Rec, Community. I don't know how people remember quotes from shows because I can remember quotes from three movies and that's it. Everything else is gone out of my brain. Let me so, tell you, I couldn't remember nothing when it comes to studying, but when it comes to something that brought joy to yeah. my life. <laughs> I can respond immediately with what they just said. <laughs> well, it's, it's like music too. I'm like, are you kidding me? You can throw on a 2000 song and all of a sudden I like know every single word. And I'm like, where is that coming? What what part of the brain does that file in? <laughs> and then yep. it's like, it okay. crawls out somehow. December 1st hits. And then it's like, oh, we're loading the Grinch file. That's what we're doing. <laughs> 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 bring that up to front <laughs> what do you what are your what are some of your favorite quotes i think we've gone through quite a few of them in this movie already but what is what is your top is, let's do like top quote of the there's movie. there's too many quotes to do top <laughs> quotes because yeah. i want to start at the beginning when he's going to the mail room yeah and i didn't know what he was saying early on in my life because i didn't get it but i watched it recently when he was throwing all the envelopes into people's things he's like jury, oh, they'll, jury. they'll take them years to fix this and he's like blackmail jury duty jury duty blackmail and i didn't know what those two things were at the time when growing up but then when when uh he comes down and max is behind him and max chomps him on the rear end and he's like that is not a chew toy <laughs> <laughs> and then, then you have Cindy and him's first meeting. Yes. And, you know, she falls into the machine that presses all the presents together. That's a fragile, which is hilarious because they crush the present to yeah. say fragile. <laughs> and then she's like, thanks for saving me. And he like halts up at the door and he's it like, like saving you? Is that what you think, is I, that was what you think I was doing? <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts tying her up and he's like, Max, pick out a bow. And he's like, can I borrow your finger for a second? <laughs> I love that. Because <laughs> he's like, I might have noticed that you were pr- improperly packaged, my dear. Packaged. <laughs> <laughs> and then just anything to do with him being in his lair. But when he first mm-hmm. goes back up to Mount Crumpet and he takes the express 
lane with the for the trash and he, it's basically a slide that goes up there and he sits and he's like oh another load coming down <laughs> and it lands on him and he's like oh what is that stench it's fantastic <laughs> <laughs> Max, grab a bag. We'll come back for the rest. <laughs> that one, I think that has to be probably our most between you and I. I think our yeah. most. Grab a bag. Quoted, yeah. <laughs> well, don't, grab a bag. Well, don't just stand now. <laughs> yeah. It's like one man's trash is another man's potpourri. <laughs> And then the uh, what, what moment that stood out to me watching it this time because I didn't get it growing up is when he's sitting in his chair and after he's he's crushed, he's eating the glass and he's like, am I eating because I'm bored? But then he looks at the glass. He's like, oh, good year because he, it's like a wine it's bottle. Wine. <laughs> and then people like wine that has an older date to it because it's fermented for longer. But it's another one I love. That stuck out to me more this time was when he's messing around with Max and he's like, oh, oh grab the, he's like, grab the stick, Max, get the stick, Max. And he chucks it. And then Max runs away and he's like, there's no stick. I'm smarter. <laughs> <laughs> there's no stick. Oh, I, it's too good. I think as we're going through now, one of them for sure has to be when he's got his director hat on and he is making Max a reindeer and he's trying <laughs> cut print to, to the whatever it says there at the end and it's like he's like now listen you're a reindeer <laughs> <He likes. laughs> and then, then 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 he then max has the, the the nose come off he's like brilliant you reject your brilliant. own nose <laughs> <laughs> what's funny about that scene is that the director ron howard he wanted to feel, he wanted to immerse himself like the actors. So he mm -hmm. actually did the Grinch makeup for two and a half hours, got in the costume and directed a full day in the Grinch outfit. No so way. that what? was Jim Carrey's impression of Ron Howard. <laughs> he put his director hat on and then did that scene talking to Max. So he was that's just a, imitating Ron Howard. Oh my God, but Ron Howard really wanted to get into the feel. So he wore the whole, whole outfit for you know, the full day of shooting and everyone was confused who was who when they were on set together. Cause sometimes Jim Carrey would go behind the camera and watch things, but you know, they were wearing the exact same. He had, well, he had his director's hat on, but he was just imitating Ron Howard for that scene. Um, and I think it was so well done. That's so brilliant. Awesome. You reject your own <laughs> nose. <laughs> Cut print to the. To, I, I I gotta watch it again because that the rest of that line is awesome. <laughs> I didn't realize that Ron Howard actually did that. No, that's, neither did that's I. That's some serious dedication. I watched the bonus features after I watched the film, and they nice. showed the making of all the sets and like Ron Howard talking about the actors and getting into costume. That that it makes me curious. So all of the the hats or outfits that Jim had to wear for the movie that was a different costume technically, like. Did he have to go through the same process of getting ready? Like, like the hat, like I'm sure they didn't just put the director's hat on top of the head. He might've had like a different cap, like, you know, so maybe with cap. one, not as high, like his hair, yeah. not as high up, but yeah, like all the other outfits, I'm sure they just put it over top of his Grinch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like that, that takes that. That's a, another design thing. That's like, that's kind of take some time to do. Yeah. Oh, or they just weird. crushed it. Like it's just that's yak true. Hair. It's just like it just flattens like was, any other person. Was it hair. yak hair? It was yak hair. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> okay, because it looked coarse when he puts the uh, the sweater on, and then same thing. He kind of gives that like ooh, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I think about, one of my other favorites is when he is at the the celebration and he's like, she's like, please, Mister Grinch, and. He was like, okay, I'll, you know, put him in the chair kind of thing. He's like, the chair of cheer. The chair of cheer. You didn't tell me it was a chair of cheer. The chair of cheer. <laughs> but, but. It's What's the like, chair of cheer? <laughs> it's like after that, when he's in it and they're feeding him so much stuff. And it's like one, I think, I mean, the whole freaking movie is my favorite. But then they're feeding him stuff and the guy goes, this isn't pudding. And he goes, then what is it? <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like the whole the next two minutes you're like what what was that <laughs> just, what, yeah. 
<laughs> and then he's just sitting in his chair all full and he's like, ah, oh. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> the food coma. And then they do the conga and he's like, oh, all right. And he's like, kick. <laughs> I'm number one. <laughs> you lose. <laughs> What did he say about beating all the kids? Yeah, I'm better than all every kid. He, like, He's like, I'm the best or something. Yeah. It's like, yeah, every everyone at Whoville sucks or something. Yeah. <laughs> but I love when Cindy first goes to meet him and he's smashing his head between the monkey <laughs> and the symbols because he's trying to drown out the hubilation. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, he gets up there and she's he stops the monkey. And uh, he puts on the the, the tank top and the he's like ripping it. <laughs> he's like, run for your life. And he's like, he starts biting him with his nose. He's like, I'm a psycho. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she has, she's like so numb Not to it. Faced, she's like, yeah. yeah, how many takes have, did you do for this? You know, oh, for yeah. him totally. to just do whatever he wants, for her to just stand there and be like, have no reaction whatsoever. <laughs> but I love when um, he looks to, the, he breaks the fourth wall. And he looks up kids to the camera. Days. Kids these days. <laughs> yeah. So he sensitized by movies and television. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like when they do that, she's looking directly at him. So like he's still in front of frame. It's mm-hmm. so well done. And then he's walking away. And when he walks, he's like his, I don't, his feet don't walk like normal. He like drags them and he's like hopping them down. But his arms just do this. Like he's just bringing his hands and elbows up. And he's just like walking like a, a slump. And she's like <laughs> falling away. And he's like, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> and and I love in that moment too when she is um in his lair and she's getting ready, whatever. And even her her tone of things, and I know that she's a kid, so like for her, I'm sure they went over it, but when she's saying that he won and he's like, I won, she goes, You won like her octave, yeah. like it was so perfect and it was so cute. <laughs> and she was so excited that she's like, Oh my God, this is my best friend. And he won. And I got to bring him to the celebration because she was so dead set that like, if he comes, it'll change the trajectory. And he wasn't who they thought he was. Like she knew that. And I just thought that was so cool. That brings me back is that when he said, I, I'm a, he's like, I'm a winner. That means there were losers. <laughs> and then she's like, Martha may I'll be there. And he's oh, like, yeah. oh, really? Oh, that means you'll see me a winner. <laughs> Betty. <Yeah>. Hi. hi. <laughs> but uh, I think, I think everyone's most iconic point is when he swings down f- from the top of his lair and he lands in his chair and, and he starts the, and he calls and he's like, hmm, odd, better check the outgoing. And it's like, if you, if you so much as utter a uh, word, I will cut you like a fish. And he's like, okay. And then he starts his like, when, after she, if Cindy Lou Who leaves and he's like, ah, oh, even if I wanted to go, my schedule oh, wouldn't wow. allow it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, 430, jazz of size. Yes. <laughs> 6.30, dinner with me. I can't, I can't cancel, cancel that, that again. again. <laughs> 7.30, stare into the abyss. <laughs> I guess That's it. I... I'm booked. <laughs> Self, <laughs> self-loathing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he goes, oh, I guess if I move this to that. Oh. I love, I don't know if you guys know this, but when he goes over to find the skirt first, it's not right. a dress, it's a it's kilt. A kilt. You're You're out. Out. When he He's... when he puts that on, he swipes it from the table. The garter. He didn't mean to do that. So that's why when he went back to push the table over and mess everything up, that's what originally wanted to happen. But because oh. he did it and it it just magic tricked, you know, and it came off. And he realized it's like, okay, well, I wanted this to be a mess. So he ran back and just shoved yeah. the table over. That was all Jim Carrey. <laughs> that's awesome. Iconic. So good. <laughs> and I think one of my favorite ones near near the end is, I mean, definitely on the mountaintop that serves its own purpose. But when they're back together and they're coming down and they're coming so fast, and she's I like, "I know what you're going to say." Like, yeah. she, she's like, "We're going to crash." <laughs> now you listen to me, young lady. <laughs> um, <laughs> there will be no sad faces on Christmas, Christmas. and they're coming down, <laughs> even if we're horribly mangled. <laughs> <laughs> and they're coming down and then dad's there and he goes dad move it I just, yeah. dad move <laughs> out of the way dad move <laughs> it <laughs> I think that for me there's just Thanks so much help, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that for me is like 
he's like, no, this is my dad now too. Like <laughs> I'm part of the family. Yeah. Cindy Lou and I were BFFs. <laughs> like it was just so amazing. <laughs> and he sh- steps out his hand. Thanks for the help, Lou. <laughs> I also love when they ask him or she asks him and then he, he trying to internalize it himself and he's talking and he says, what if it's a cruel prank? What if yeah. it's a cash bar? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, that's it. Yes. Um, no. Yes. Yes. And then he, Max is, he's like, what, what if we flipped a car? <laughs> <He's going down laughs> uh, my, fingers, my, my fingers were crossed. And I love when he's outside and he's reading off the phone book and he's like, Hey, hey, hey. Hate, hate, double, double hate. hate. Oh, entirely. <laughs> <laughs> that whole movie is so cool. I, oh. Everyone, I'm just like, oh my God, no. Like, how about we just go, you know, minute for minute? Because either it's a line, yeah. it's a line or a movement. Because then not only, like we were talking about body language, once he gets down and, you know, does the thanks for the help through, the way that he jumps out, of the thing, right? Because he's now like, oh, mm-hmm. they all still think I'm so bad, right? But I saved Christmas, even though I stole it. And he jumps out yeah. and is so much bigger than himself. And then the reaction all collectively, like, <gasps> and then he like kind of looks he's around. Full of joy and, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I've got it back, like even though I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> another the last before we go on to the next part the last one is when he's down for the jubilation and then the mayor i love the mayor and then the mayor goes oh we have a surprise for you and he introduces his parents and he goes you two you are still so living <laughs> someone mentioned a check yeah <laughs> there's no check i could have sworn there was an award of some kind <laughs> but i think that goes into now Obviously, the original Grinch, there was only a narrator, and they got Anthony Hopkins to narrate this movie. Mm -hmm. But in terms of writing a script, what do you guys think was the script for Jim Carrey versus what Jim Carrey just ad-libbed and created his own scenes? Like, do you think Ron Howard even bothered writing? Like, obviously, he had basic dialogue, but for certain scenes, you think he just said Jim Carrey in the script and just (laughs) let's run seven or eight takes just to see what he can come up with? Because that's who you were casting. Yeah, I... I think for sure, like, right, they set out because they knew already what he did and how he was as an actor and what he was going to bring to the table. And that's why, I mean, to me, I don't think of anything else, anybody else who could have done what he did and ad, definitely ad lived. He had to have. And I think it would be so fun to see the other takes because there had to have been, right? There had to have been stuff that he just tried and then tried and he's like oh no we're all like oh that's that's it okay now like that's the line like it had to have been jim carrey take over we'll see what you fit in the line to be and then we'll write it in the script and that's the line because like you said like i didn't even know that him swiping it and then to have watched that happen and to be like okay he's swiping this from the table and what in his own mind and the cameraman like the the thought process of like having to keep up with him because he now just was like okay this is gonna mess up right so he thought perfect that's the scene but then the scene was so much better because the act of him going back and being like no i have to mess it up was so iconic (laughs) I think they just let the tape roll. I don't think there yep. was any point where, unless Jim called cut to, or like said, oh, let me do that again. I messed it up. Like, yep. I think they just let it play and they just kind of waited for the golden take where Jim was like, okay, that's, that's the one. Cause even the narrator, when he, the part when Jim or Jim, when the Grinch is stealing all of the, the presence and Anthony Hopkins says he slunk there to the refrigerator and Jim Carrey goes slunk. slunk. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> slunk. That's definitely something that wasn't in the script. And Jim's like, well, I'm definitely doing this, mm-hmm. you know, or when he's taking off his socks, la la da, sha la dee, <laughs> and he's like removing his these again, ha la la. <laughs> Just that, that you can't script any of this, no. you know. And I think as a, my last point, I think as a director and a, a cast like that, and specifically your main character, the the trust and the faith that you have to have between the two of you to know that I'm going to direct this in a way that it's going to, like, this is the vision. And I think both of them had such a strong vision and working together. You have to trust, like, listen, I'm just going to roll 
and I, you do you. Like, I, I know where this is going to travel. And like, I've, you know, I have the script and this is how it's going to flow. But otherwise, like, it's your, it's your world. Like, you do you. And we're, we will all be there just to watch the, the amazing right. work that you're going to do. Like, it was incredible. Even, even, even with movies that Robin Williams was in, it was, it was kind of like, here's the script. Mrs. And Doubtfire? we're going to let you exactly. It's like, we, we will just, we'll let you go. And we trust you go for it. We got, we've got the film, just do a couple takes and pick your, pick your favorite, refine it over time. Yeah. Cause sometimes when you do takes like that, the scene really develops into something greater that was, wasn't on the page. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think with those certain actors too, I mean, you have to think as someone who that's their profession and their career to have already had such a career as Jim Carrey did to leading up to this movie and others, like you said, um, Robin Williams and Heath Ledger, right. To get to the point, cause come on, Heath Ledger had to have ad libbed as well. Like that was a whole thing, but to get to a point in your career and as an actor where you are able to walk on set and they're wait, like you get to perform. And people are in awe of what you bring to the table and what you're going to do. And I'm sure every day on set, right? Like that two and a half hours, that first longer, and then it got shorter. You you don't tell, like he was running through the day, probably, like probably, right? What he was going to do and the things like how he was going to act. And I just feel like being on set with him every day, like those are those iconic people where you're like, I am going to learn so much. And I am just in awe that I get to be here and you're honored, right. To get to be in the presence of those great actors. And I think it must've been difficult. I mean, most of the time he was by himself, but to have castmates not know what he's going to say just to ruin takes because people are laughing must've been the most difficult process. Yeah. Because to go back to what you said, Kat, about him maybe planning, but I think Jim was more of a spontaneous I know what the scene is, but like, I want to wait till on the day. And like, when you brought up Heath Ledger, the scene in the dark night, when he was in the hospital room with Aaron Eckhart as two face, mm -hmm. there was an interview where Aaron Eckhart said that they didn't have any plan for the day. There was no, that the, the script was Joker meets two face. That was, that was the script. So when they went in, he said there was a 20 minute, just of Heath walking around the hospital room and Eckhart, Aaron was just looking at him for 20 minutes. And then the cameras were rolling. Christopher Nolan just knew he just let Heath do his thing. Mm -hmm. And so by the time they kind of developed this whole scene, and then when Heath started the lines, Aaron Eckhart was just in. He's like, we spent this 20 minute period of silence, just building, crafting the scene before Heath finally spoke and did his lines. And then it was just, that's how the scene came out. That was just one take. And it was like, they just that's crafted wild. it without any kind of knowledge in the script. So it's just kind of stuff like that where actors are just, they performers do right they yeah, just they that's why you job. cast them yeah they yeah. do their job and, and, <laughs> yeah. and that's, what, that's what i mean by like could you imagine like for that scene could you imagine the set we're like minute 15 it's quiet he's just walking back and mm -hmm. forth and nobody can say anything because obviously they're doing their job right they're getting into character they're there but you're like okay minute 18 like anything gonna happen yeah. <laughs> and then then it happens and you're just like Oh yeah. my God. Right. That 20 minutes probably felt like five. And that's Christopher Nolan knowing his actors and just waiting for the opportunity where the scene will deliver itself. Right. Yeah. But I think with movies like the dark Knight and the Grinch in terms of how the performers kind of gave their performance, I think going back to holiday films and what the Grinch means for the holiday season, movies like home alone, Tim Allen's the Santa Claus one, two, and three elf, and you have Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You have Santa Claus is Coming to the Town, the old stop-motion claymation films. Mm -hmm. And I think if you were to rank how you would place these films and where the Grinch would sit, now knowing all the other ones, where they would place, what would be, let's say, your top three that you always go back to and have to watch in terms of what they mean to you? Can we collectively group the Santa Clauses 1, 2, and 3 as a unit <laughs> <laughs> it's a trilogy yes the santa yeah, claus yeah, trilogy. We, we can do that okay. for you you can you can say that yeah. the santa clauses can cool. come yeah as a package. because yeah because 100 percent, i feel like if i'm 
going to watch those. I'm setting out and we're doing one, two, three, like not in a day, but like we're going to be watching them back to back. But, um, a hundred percent. I mean, it's the Grinch, the Santa Claus is in the elf for me because all of them, I feel like embody everything that the holidays are supposed to be about and that we say that they're supposed to be about. And, you know, we get lost in all the stuff and all the glitter and everything like that. Right. But each one has its own feel good part. And I think there's so much like cheer and comedy that I think everybody relates to. Top three. Easy. If it will, oh shit, the holiday. But <laughs> I- <laughs> let's see. Now here's the thing. The holiday is more of a rom com set during Christmas. To- you're yes. right. Where these other movies are about Christmas, Christmas. or a Christmas figure. Because a lot of rom coms, like every single Hallmark movie takes place during Christmas, but it's not a Christmas yeah. movie. It's just a romantic comedy. Yeah. So the holiday you can consider, but it's like Home Alone takes place. It's Home Alone is a Christmas movie because yes. it's about it's Christmas about and Christmas. family. Yeah. Right. So where do you rank your Christmas movies, Nick? Oh, um, <sighs> the Grinch is up top. Um, I also, I would say the, I would say Home Alone one and two. And then Charlie Brown Christmas for me, because kind of like you said, Kat, like those are the things that embody Christmas to me. It's the simplicity. It's the reminding us that it isn't about the stuff. It's about how we feel at that time with the people we care about. And and it, they've always been there. So it's something you can come back to uh, and remind yourself, this is how I felt years ago when I was five, six, seven. Uh, and it didn't have a lot of other things to worry about. So I think I think that's my my list. It would be Grinch, Home Alone One and Two, and Charlie Brown Christmas. What about you, Brian? That's a solid list. I'm definitely putting Grinch number one. I would put I think I would put Home Alone one number two, and then I would put the Tim Allen Santa Claus one at number three. Some people will argue Elf is definitely in the top three. Like Cat Elf is in yours. At that point in my life, Will Ferrell wasn't a big draw for me. So as enjoyable as Elf is now, it wasn't as impactful to me then. So uh, Home Alone and Tim Allen's Santa Claus set the standard for, I think, Christmas movies it yeah. did. about Santa Claus. Yeah, It changed the game forever. They're, they're my all-time favorite. And I think when we're talking about the movies, the movies that are our favorites around Christmas is because they give us that feeling. And I think the reason why Elf, because I was a bit younger when that, came I mean all of them I was younger but I was younger than you so I still had that you know kid like so all the little fun like he was eating freaking spaghetti with chocolate syrup and M&Ms and or yeah. everything right so it was just those Guzzling little syrup you know the four food groups like that was everything yeah. so <laughs> so I think that makes it in purely because of the joy and the bliss and it's like 100% I don't go Christmas season without watching the Grinch at least one time. And it just reminds me, like, I remember the first time I like, could you imagine like, we forget about it so quickly because when they become our favorites, you know, Brian with Spider-Man, like you just, you just watch them and it is what it is. But like, if you can try and remember the first time that you have seen a movie, like the Grinch changed my entire life. <laughs> like it really did because the way that we act and the way that we have that relationship with each other, and we say those lines and then it became almost like around the holidays for me that I practiced these lines and I was that comedic, you know, I, I don't have great jokes, but I can replicate things. And that was one of the things that I knew would get a nice chuckle. And for me in, in the past and, you know, going through bullying and stuff like that, when I was around family, it was safe and I could laugh and I could make them laugh. And that was the Grinch. And once I got into that, it was like, perfect. This is my thing. And this is like a talent now. (laughs) But yeah, I think, I think holiday movies, like the message of everyone is about family rather than presents. Cause even nowadays as things get more expensive, we're like, okay, Maybe let's not do presents this year. I just want yeah. to see you guys and hang, yeah. hang out. Yeah. <laughs> maybe let's go. Let's go like maybe grab a bite to eat rather than spend money or like let's go big, to the movies or big time entertainment, play games or something. Yeah. Big time yeah. entertainment or go hang around and have, 
you know, we'll, we'll make a charcuterie board with, you know, board games and stuff. It's that's yeah. the message of every Christmas movie is, you know, the people you're with rather than what you totally. get to open. But nowadays, it's like, what do I want for Christmas? I don't know, maybe some some dishwasher pods because they're so expensive, <laughs> some toilet paper <laughs> stuff for the house. Like you can't, I don't know, like buy me Doritos because they're now two for 11. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when Doritos were two for five? What? The times to be alive. Oh my times God. to be alive, everybody. But yeah, I think to wrap it up, Christmas movies <laughs> hold a special place in everybody's heart because of the time of year. Yep. Like everyone says, the second Halloween ends, everyone wants to put up the tree, mm-hmm. feel the warmth because, you know, there's light snowfall. People want the hot chocolate and the cocoa. Put on the good rom-coms. People binge in Hallmark movies left and right. Oh, my favorite. Putting on the Santa Clauses, mm-hmm. putting on the Grinch. And I think it's just that time of the year is just the most memorable time for people because every other time is surrounded by chaos and work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what this podcast is really bringing everybody together. And so for everyone listening, if you obviously you've seen The Grinch, but let us know your favorite Christmas movie down below. And I want to thank my sister Kat for hopping on and talking about The Grinch because I know she's been waiting to talk (laughs) about this movie for 27 years. (laughs) So, so long. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. She so talks much about for... it to herself every day, but <laughs> <laughs> to have a, a wide audience collective yes. of her love for the Grinch is another story. Thank you so much for having me. I've had it on the calendar and I've been looking forward to it. And it was just so fun. I think, you know what, I was kind of a little bit nervous because I was like, oh, you know, but I was like, this is so cool because, I mean, you guys do it every week. And I I guess I didn't realize, you know, until we were like 15 minutes in and I'm like, okay, I'm really relaxed because this is just us having a conversation about personally one of my favorite movies and it was just really fun. I guess I've never really delved in so deep about why I like it and why it's so fun to watch. So this was just really a great way to start my Sunday. Yeah. We're, we're glad that you felt comfortable doing it because that's, I think that's how we started. We were very much like, we didn't know what to expect of this and how to feel, but we're, you know, we talk about things that we like, and that's why we bring people on with things they're passionate about. They've they've always enjoyed because, it, it, yeah, we 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 get kind of deep into the the nitty gritty of the movies and why we actually like them because it's it makes us it gives us a better appreciation not only for why we like the movies, but if you if we learn why somebody else likes a movie it makes us appreciate it more because it's it adds another personal level to it It, it's it's not just oh i like it because i like it but it's like no it's special to you too and that that makes a big difference i love it we're ending we're ending on a deep note Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just hitting all the feels, and it's I I think you know it, it's kind of it's kind of crazy when you think like wow I've actually like never talked this long about something I love so much like uh, because it's so mm-hmm. random like I wouldn't I wouldn't really get coffee with a friend and be like hey I want to talk your ear off about the Grinch <laughs> let's pick apart the Grinch today yeah <laughs> we have an hour today the Grinch yeah. the Grinch yeah of course of course. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> but this has been really nice. Uh, and this is two hours on a Sunday. Thank you very much, Kat, for coming on. I'm Nick. I'm Brian. And we'll catch you guys later.